Prime Minister Netanyahu is facing rising pressure at home to safely bring back the more than 200 hostages that Israel says Hamas is holding. Many people feel the Israeli airstrikes are also endangering the captives. On Saturday, Netanyahu met with hostages' family members, some of whom publicly support swapping the hostages for Palestinian prisoners held in Israel. Candles form the number 1,400, a grim tally. It's the number of victims killed in this month's Hamas terror attack on southern Israel. Hamas also sees more than 220 hostages, according to Israel. Their families are demanding answers. Holding pictures of victims and hostages, protesters took to the streets, chanting slogans against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. How long will we continue with this bloodshed? Until when? What else? Tomorrow, your children, their grandchildren. Netanyahu met relatives to reassure them, saying Israeli forces would do everything they could to bring the hostages home. The operation is ongoing and the key is pressure. The greater the pressure is, the greater are the chances. Israel unleashed a massive bombing campaign after Hamas gunmen stormed across the Gaza border. The heavy shelling has relatives worried that their loved ones are also being bombed or that Hamas will carry out reprisals. We have demanded that no action be taken that endangers the fate of our family members and any step considered should take into account the safety of our loved ones. The Hamas-controlled health ministry in Gaza said Israeli strikes have killed over 7,700 people mainly civilians, with more than 3,500 of them children. Hamas says it will release the hostages it abducted if Israel frees all the Palestinian prisoners that it's holding. Relatives feel the government has failed to consult them and give regular updates. It's been three weeks and we don't know what's happening to our loved ones. We don't know their fate. We are afraid. We are worried. Where are they? What's happening to them? Is someone taking care of them? As Israel steps up its ground assaults inside Palestinian territory, Netanyahu is under growing pressure to deliver the hostages back safely. I'm joined now by Gershon Baskin. He's an Israeli peace activist and author and also operated a negotiating channel with Hamas for the release of the Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit back in 2011. Welcome to you, Gershon. I want to start by asking, how do you negotiate with Hamas terrorists? What are the basics of engaging in such an incredibly delicate situation like we see now? But the first rule of negotiations of any kind, regardless of who you're negotiating with, is to know that the person you're negotiating with can deliver the goods at the end of an agreement. Um, and, and this is the first difficulty we're encountering right now. When I was negotiating, I was negotiating through my counterpart, who was Dr. Razi Hamad. He was the deputy foreign minister at the time in Gaza. And he was in direct contact with Ahmed Jabri, who was the person heading the military wing of Hamas, who was responsible for holding Shalit. So our messages were actually a very short channel. They went between a Mossad officer who was appointed by Netanyahu to me, to Razi Hamid to Ahmed Jabri. It was very short, very few people involved. And we knew that at the end of the line, Jabri could deliver it and Netanyahu could deliver it. In this case, we don't know if the Hamas people in Doha, in, in Qatar, can deliver We're from the political wing. We don't know if Hamas in Gaza is holding all the hostages. Hostages were also taken by the Islamic Jihad, the PFLP and other groups and individuals. Uh, we're not speaking directly, no one's speaking directly, apparently, to the military wing in Hamas. Perhaps the Egyptians are. We don't know if there's coordination between Egypt and Qatar. And the last thing that I would say that makes a successful negotiation possible is that parties have to be uh, aware and know what they're willing to do in the agreement for uh, whatever it is they're negotiating. Uh, right. After five years of Shalit being held hostage, the Israeli prime minister knew what the deal was and he gave the green light for it. Uh, we don't have five years now to wait. Decisions have to be made now whether uh, a deal is going to be made or not and what are the options if a deal isn't made. 
Yeah, one of the options that appears on the table from the outside, uh, it appears there's little progress, though, on a possible prisoner exchange. Uh, it's what, what many of the relatives uh, of the hostages are pushing for. In your experience, what is it that is most difficult in negotiating an exchange like this? There, there are two possibilities on the table right now, and I wouldn't say that there's no progress. We don't know about the progress, and we should really take every announcement made in the media as part of the negotiating process. It's part of the psychology, it's part of the pressure. Uh, the two options are a, a deal for the release of the women, the children, the elderly, the sick, uh, and the wounded. This is the civilians who are in the deal in exchange for what Hamas is saying, uh, uh, an extended ceasefire. Initially, they were talking about five days, maybe more. The second deal that's been on the table is the release of all the Israelis in Gaza, all the hostages in exchange for all the Palestinian prisoners. And then the question is, what do you do with them? Israel will not release them to the West Bank, where they would pose a direct threat to Israel security. Releasing them to Gaza seems like a possibility, but we're talking between six and 7,000 prisoners of whom 600 of them have murdered Israelis already. There's a huge risk in releasing them to Gaza. I have an idea that I just thought of this morning. Why don't, why don't we send them to Qatar? The Qataris have been hosting the Hamas leadership for years now, funded Hamas with over a billion dollars. Why doesn't Qatar offer to take the Palestinian prisoners? They can give them a good life there. And I'm sure that the Qataris will be very strict in maintaining that they won't engage in terrorist activities from Qatar. There are solutions. If we want to be right. creative and we want to get this done, it has to be done quickly. Gershon Baskin, thank you for your time and your many insights today. Really appreciate it. Thank you.